Hey everybody, hey it's Rob at Old Style Classics Baseball Cards. How you doing? <clears throat> it's technically uh, August 18th, Sunday still, 11 o'clock p.m. California time. Um, so welcome to Old Style Classics Baseball Cards. I'm pre-recording the first episode of Minor League Monday tonight um, so that I can release that tomorrow morning. Um, me and my wife went to the movies today, and if you can see that there, we went seeing Alien Romulus in Sunnyvale, but look at the price, people. Look at this. To go to a movie at 5 o'clock in the afternoon, $31. That's ridiculous, and that was with getting a discount. So, had we gone to the laser one, that would have been a... Um, <clears throat> almost 40 some odd dollars so that's ridiculous I guess that's why I don't go to the movies much and they don't have like bargain theaters here I mean they have like cheap Tuesdays but I gotta work um, but they don't have like dollar movies here anymore the closest they used to have was like five dollar show so that was a bit much um, but anyways just wanted to show you that ridiculous price to see a movie popcorn was good movie all right, uh, I'll get into that in a second. But what we're going to do today is we're going to do more of these Minor League Monday. And I got the 2004 Top Prospects trading cards. And I believe this is the Pacific Coast League version there. And that is for multi-ad sports. So you can see like my Isotopes logo there, my Iowa Cubs, and then all those other teams for Triple A Baseball. Um, so then we went to the movie, saw that left to go get something to eat so we got some hot wings and uh came back started watching alien resurrection now i'm not going to give you any spoilers um i'm going to give you my i love alien movies and i'm going to give you my honest opinion this one is not great and not bad it's 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 somewhere in the middle it it's entertaining it's fun. I wouldn't go watch it again, you know, pay. I'll watch it if it comes on streaming or something like that. It's okay. The biggest problem is the, the characters are way too young. So thank God they didn't turn it into like a Twilight movie or something like that. Maybe that was the direction they were going to go in. But they, um, it was just kind of unbelievable. Like, like, they're so young, how do they have this ship? They didn't explain that, but what they did do that was kind of good was they did try to answer a few questions that you were left hanging with from like the Prometheus and Alien Covenant movies, even though this is far in the future. So that was a little jarring, like a little out of place that they were kind of pointing something out that you were like, well, why did that happen? And then there was a little too much fan service. You know how kind of like Star Wars, the... Um, Force Awakens was just kind of redoing the original Star Wars with new characters. You know, a robot that has some secret in it, and they got to find the robot, and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, some people would say that was a lot of fan service in that. And to a degree, I agree with that, but that was more like kind of a remake, like almost the same exact story. This one wasn't the same story as any of the other ones, but it had aspects of most of the movies, not counting the Predator ones. So, had a little bit of the prequel, Prometheus, Covenant kind of era, original, uh, kind of talked about aliens a tad, and... Um, yeah so the thing is it, it was it was beautiful beautiful um special effects but then they went cheap on a few things you would notice a few things that was just a little off like you know they didn't do a whole lot of detail like on the hallway um compared to what they did in aliens then they also didn't um I feel like the alien wasn't hardly a character in the movie. 
like you know like the Jurassic Park with the Velociraptor it had a lot of character to it and this was just they were just kind of there you know and uh, and then how they got there and what they were doing that was never really explained um, and like I said you, you never really were like oh oh no an aliens gonna pop out or something like that they were just kind of there so my thing is it, it was passable movie they did an okay job it looked good some of the acting was you know it was it was good to okay and uh, you know you had to put your suspend your belief you know to um, accept it for what it is and so my only problem is instead of talking about all the things I liked about it I'm like well they did this and then they did that and none of them were like super bad in any sense and they weren't like all stacked together so you were like that was really dumb it was just occasionally there was something dumb and it was like why did they do that so aside from that it, it was it's a fun movie um, it fits somewhere in the middle and it also goes well enough with the whole canon that it's like okay it just kind of moves the story along a little bit more it doesn't destroy anything it doesn't really make it better other than maybe they answered a few questions so that's my opinion all right folks so here we're gonna go we're gonna do some minor league Monday and that's my rant for the day so hold on a second here all right people and a quick shout out to ASR Roy or Matthew who sent me an email saying he found a really neat one of 50 gold Allen and Ginter mini gold um, from 2022 chrome that he picked up at a local card shop and was wondering if it was something I wanted and I was like not really because I don't collect the twins or Byron Buxton but it's a beautiful card it's just not something I need I got plenty of 2022 chrome golds and different stuff like that so I'm not trying to I'm not a set builder and it's just okay I bought that stuff and I keep it you know what I mean the stuff I seek out would be more like the Andre Dawson's and, and stuff like that so I really do appreciate that um, but yeah so if you come across any rare Andre Dawson stuff you know you can always reach out to me like he did and uh, leave me a message or a comment you know definitely looking for you know old style classic kind of cards of Andre Dawson like maybe some Alan and Ginter numbered cards like that um, <clears throat> but you'd have to let me know first don't just go buy it because I may already have it all right folks but I really appreciate that um, like subscribe send people my way if you wouldn't mind and here we go it's got the little uh, hologram there and uh, so what we got here once again 2004 top prospects triple a so let's see if we got any stars we know the last one is because we've seen that before all right so there's the little logo and I guess there's a checklist I'm not gonna read through it you guys can stop that if you want that's technically card number one the checklist and that is by um, multi ad sports so there we go um, I didn't look to see who's in it I've looked at this but it's been 20 years I guess friend I probably looked at this Chris Aguila sounds familiar and oh isotopes because I think we saw his card last week when I showed the isotopes one so yeah these are specific to this set so they're not like they just took a card from all those different team sets so there we go Chris Aguila affiliate the Marlins back in the day let's take a pause and read about him there all right cards not stuck together but they're not they don't slide apart very easy all right who we got here top prospect Craig Ansman and does it say the name of the team right there Pacific Coast League that's where it doesn't show the logo on this one 
I guess it didn't on that one either, so we'll have to go to the back and see who these guys are. Uh, Sidewinder, so I think that probably Tucson, I'm guessing. Oh, El Paso? I don't know. El Paso goes by the Chihuahuas now. So I don't know. Oh, yeah, Tucson Sidewinders. There we go. So Tucson, Arizona. Tucson Sidewinders. Please set your setting to 1.25 or 1.5 on the speed to get me to sound a little normal because my voice is still out of it. And um, after I do this, we go into bed. Got to go back to work. Hey, there we go. Clint Barnes. So he was the first autograph I ever pulled from Allen and Ginter in 2006. If that's the same Clint Barnes that I'm thinking of. So you can go back and look at my Allen and Ginter autographs that I went through three or four months ago. And he's the first one I ever pulled out of Allen and Ginter 2006. And at the time I showed that card, I had just ordered off of eBay his relic card. That was just a few bucks. Uh, the interesting thing about him I guess he was a pretty big prospect at the time because one, he made it into Allen and Ginter and number two, he was part of the autographs and the relics but not only that, but he was one of the actual um, box loader cards that you could be, that you can get uh, he might have been one of the 101's uh, postcards so I don't think he ever panned out really but there you can see Colorado Springs in 03 he played for them so he's Rockies, yep, so that's the same guy because I have him in the Rockies. Uh, but old Colorado Springs, at that point in time, at least their fan base probably had no clue that their time of being a AAA team was running out because within less than a decade, I believe, the Isotopes became the new Rockies farm team and Colorado S Springs went away. So Travis Blackley, prospect there. Sorry, this thing's just off center a little bit for me. Tacoma Renairs. When we went up to Seattle, we drove, you know, Tacoma's like right there. And we drove through there and I, they were doing all kinds of construction on the freeway. But I was like, dang, I wish we could have stopped and gone and seen a, a game there because I like visit different stadiums. Hey, look at that, people. He's from Australia. Have you guys ever, um, like, looked on YouTube <clears throat> and, uh, whatever and, um, watch the... They have professional teams out there in Australia now. They have their own league. Now, it's kind of more like an independent league here, you know, just kind of play at the park, you know, like a Frontier League or Pecos League kind of level stuff but that's cool that um, baseball is becoming popular enough in Australia that they actually have professional teams so Travis Blackley all right next we have show the back for Sacramento River Cats so we went up there to see a game um, I'm not sure who we saw him play I don't know if, I don't think it was the isotopes I think it was Utah, the the bees or whatever. Um, we just happened to be going up there because we wanted to see another stadium. It's a pretty nice stadium. It's 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 that and Fresno are very similar. They're nice, not great, but not bad. I give them a B. That's where the A's are going to be playing next year. Funny thing is, at the time they were A's affiliate then they weren't and then they were the Giants affiliate and I think they're the A's affiliate again I'm not sure but anyways the A's are supposed to be playing there starting next year till they can move into Vegas 6 of 36 so maybe they can get 36 cards out of a um, sheet when they print these kind of stadium club like with no borders to speak of other than the bottom here Joe Blanton pitcher Hey, uh, leave a comment if any of these are your local team. All right, New Orleans Zephyrs. I don't know if they're still around. I think they are. For Houston, they're Houston Astros. 
<clears throat> All right, so there you go. Taylor Buckholtz. Hey, so he might have made it up. I, that name sounds familiar, Buckholtz. Unless I'm mixing them up with somebody else. All right. Next we have for New Orleans again, Chris Burke. From Louisville. Chris Burke, you can read about him. Please pause it. All right. Who doggy, New Orleans. Ooh, I bet you it's hot and humid there right now. Or... Oh, same thing with Nashville there for Sean Burnett. I'm not feeling male here with that name, so probably didn't make it up or very long. Nashville sounds. But he gets his time in the limelight here on old style classics baseball cards because I happen to have it. All right, Colorado Springs Sky Sox. So now defunct. Unless they move down to like double A or single A, I don't know. All right. JD Klosser. Oh, that's the other thing. So, on those Gypsy Queen videos I've been showing you, I thought that William Contreras with his mask up like this was one of the masks up. Short print, super short prints, and I was wrong, people. So I finally looked them up, and because it was the 2021 season on those Gypsy Queens, it's the players that had like a mask on for for the pandemic, uh, you know, like surgical masks and whatever that they were making us all wear when they didn't have fans in the stadium for that certain uh, virus going around. So it was any guys wearing like a surgical mask. That was the sh super short print, so... I stand corrected with some more egg on my face, but lucky I was wearing a mask and it didn't get all over the place. <laughs> when I was a kid, I was like, egg on your face? Why would, I don't understand egg on your face. So in my mind, I was like, why would somebody throw a hard boiled egg at you and hit you in the face? It wasn't until later that I realized, oh, it's, it's a raw egg like watching the Three Stooges. I never made that connection that it was actually a raw egg that you had an egg on your face. So, oops. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, boy. Only with time comes experience and any wisdom. The wisdom of having egg on your face. Omaha Royals, David De Jesus. Anyone else have any kind of similar things happen to you? Like, you know. I used to think, because of my name, when I was a kid, I went by Bobby. I always used to think, when I heard the Beach Boys, Bob Aran, I always thought it was Bob, 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 Bob Aran. I didn't realize it was Barbara Ann. <laughs> so I was like, oh, they're singing about me. I <laughs> just never was able to make the connection. Didn't know the lyrics. So, But I think that's pretty common in uh, songs. David De Jesus, Omaha. All right, next, Iowa Cubbies. Here we go. Jason Du Bois. I remember his name. Don't know. I mean, he obviously didn't stick around if he made it to the show. But I do know the name, and I think I've seen his cards. Like, in tops. I might be wrong, but Iowa Cubbies was always... I was always torn whenever they would come to Albuquerque. Do I vote for the... Go for the Cubs? Or do I go for the Isotopes? The Isotopes were my favorite team, but of course I want the Iowa Cubs to do good. So my Cubs will do good, and the Cubs are the thing I care about the most. So it was always uh, being pulled in two directions. That's one of the few times that's ever happened is in baseball for me. All right, Omaha again. Look at that, people. Wow. So who knew? Look at that picture, Zach Grinky. Nice. From Apoca, Florida. Kansas City Royals prospect, Zach Grinky. Probably on his way to the Hall of Fame, folks. Gonna probably be a Hall of Famer. So there we got a winner. I guess that 
worked out for old Kansas City because they ended up winning the World Series about 10 years ago, right? Somewhere around there. Nine years ago. Scott Hairston. Scott Hairston. Yeah, people, um, go, go check out my last few videos, especially for the Silicon Valley Card Show. I cannot believe that 101 Ryan Sandberg original art card that I was able to pick up. 30 bucks, people. I think it could be worth hundreds or even a thousand. Scott Harrison, Tucson. All right. Coil Hill. Holly Hill. Looks like the Vegas Aviators there. Oh, the 51's at the time, that's right. But they probably won't have a Triple A team in Vegas anymore. Wonder what they're going to do with that stadium. Maybe they will, I don't know. But once they build the Aza Stadium, what are they going to do with that brand new stadium they did for the 51's or the um, Aviators? Alright, moving along sticking together Edwin Jackson so we've heard that name before Edwin he's made it up that's a pretty nice shaped card pretty good shape Vegas 51's all right let's move along people Bobby Jinx stingers Salt Lake stingers so that's it so I thought it was the bees but I don't know. Some of the minor league teams changed their name a lot. All right, Dan Johnson in field. Looks like for the River Cats, Sacramento. I'm gonna move along here, folks. Um, don't want to go past half an hour. You guys can pause these at any time to read and take a look at these cards if you like. And of course, you could always ask, "Hey, can you show that one card again?" Um, if you need to see it better or it came in blurry or something, Jason Jones, Oklahoma. I'd like to see that stadium. The Brickyard. John Knott. Portland Beavers. And when we stayed in Portland, Oregon, we wanted to go to that game. They have, I think, Double A up there as well in that town right outside <clears throat> but they weren't playing when we were there Iowa Cubs John Lexter Lexter uh, kinda sounds familiar but not an obvious superstar or anything like that alright then we had Todd Linden and Todd is with Fresno Grizzlies so that, when we went to the Grizzlies game, which now they're defunct because Major League Baseball ran them out of AAA because for whatever reason they didn't like them having a AAA team there. Um, but we did go when they still had it. So I don't know if they're double A or, no, they're, low, they're California League A ball now. That big, big AAA stadium and an A ball team. Um, but we went to see the Grizzlies play isotopes up there albuquerque and we got to meet ramil tapia he came down but he couldn't speak any english but kids were standing there or i shouldn't say kid 20 something were standing there with their uh, binders full of cards trying to get them guys to sign it but he came straight to us because we were wearing our isotopes gear signed our tickets and i believe a ball and I like Romeo Tapia. I don't know where he's at now. If he's still playing. Um, but anyways, that was in Fresno. And then we got to talk to the coach. Because I guess Glenn Allen Hill was um, the manager of the Isotopes at the time. But he was at like his nephew's wedding or something. So the um, assistant coach had taken over. And we stopped. He talked to us for like five minutes. He was cool. I can't remember his name though. It's autographed on my ticket stub somewhere. Jose Lopez, infielder, Tacoma, Noah Lowry, yeah, I was watching that MLB carded, so that, they have a baseball card show on there too, so stadiums got unpacked, and MLB TV stations got carded, so Oxnard, 
Grizzlies. So that was interesting today. They had two episodes on when I woke up. Look at that, people. Wow. It's been so long since this card that he's played his career and retired. And he'll probably be a Hall of Famer, right? Yadier Molina. Look at that, folks. Can you believe it? Memphis, I like their little logo, the old school. That's very old style, classic look. But can you believe this, people? I mean, I was just there that many years ago <laughs> picking up these cards at the pro shop. And this guy was in the minors and will have gone on to have a Hall of Fame career since this card came out. And it feels literally like three or four years ago. That's unbelievable. God, people, what does that mean? We're just getting old. Clint Nagietti. Nagietto. Nagietto. Nagietti. Gioetti. Whatever. Sorry, dude. Clint. Tacoma Reneers. Raymond Navarre. Oklahoma Red Hawks. This team the Dodgers ended up buying. And now they're the Dodgers team. All right, next we have Chris Oxpring with Portland Beavers there. So I don't know, is that Portland, Oregon? Or Portland, Maine. Imagine it have to be um, Oregon because these are PCL cards. Yeah, Pacific Coast League. Not a lot of isotopes here, huh? <sighs> Excuse me. Valentino Pascucci. Valentino, what's up? Edmonton Trappers, wow. They're no longer around. I remember seeing Edmonton play the Albuquerque Dukes a lot. Joel Peralta. Salt Lake Stingers. Next, Sung Song. For Edmonton as well. From South Korea. So I wonder if he got to play in the KBO at all. Alright. We're getting there, folks. Corey Stewart. Nashville Sounds. Nick Swisher, there we go. There's a big leaguer. Made it up to the big show from the River Cats. <clears throat> Nick Swisher, Sacramento. Oh my God, it's so hot in Sacramento, people. Oh no, I just got a. Oh, look at this. Isotopes. Wilson Valdez. He might have made it up. Isotopes there. Albuquerque. So we get home from the movie, eating our food, get a text message, and my brother's like, hey, how far, for, how far from San Francisco are you? And I'm like, it's like 35 miles, but it depends, like, what part of San Francisco are you talking, like, getting in San Francisco or just the border? So it's like 35 miles to San Francisco, but 40, 45 miles when you get in there, especially depending which way you have to drive and the traffic so I was like ah, probably around 50 miles an hour with good traffic uh, maybe in the middle of the night it's more like 35 minutes um, it, that's once you get on the freeway keep that in mind San Francisco doesn't really have freeways like we you know normal cities do 101's probably slower than a side street um, because all these people going over the bridges and getting off on the streets that you can't turn on because of all the rules and stuff. So anyways, I was like, yeah, about an hour or 50 miles. I just, you know, it wasn't that I was trying to say, oh, it's actually 50 miles, but it's the equivalent of going 50 miles in New Mexico time-wise is what I was trying to get across. And I was like, why? And he goes, oh, I just flew in. Uh, he's at SFO. 
because he's flying to China. Be, well, that's what I assumed. I was like, oh, are you going to China? And he goes, yeah. And then he, but he's like, oh, I'm here till 12.50 tonight. But I'm like, yeah, I'm sure he's not going to want to, you know, I'm going to have to drive up there, which is probably more like 30 miles to um, South San Francisco or San Mateo, where their airport is. Uh, John Van Binchton. Binchton. Anyways, I was like, well, dude, you should have let me know ahead of time and he's like yeah I got delayed in Phoenix for like three hours so that's why he doesn't have as much time and I was like oh that's all right we're at the movies anyways Nashville last card folks there it is we saw that in the last episode that was in the back of that pack Adam Wainwright so there you go so I'm like he didn't really ask me to go up there and see him because he had a couple hours but I figured he had to go through like you know, you have to go, well, I don't know if you have to go to customs and all that stuff because you're flying to China, the visa and all that. And I was like, well, you should have done a layover. And he, he goes, well, I might be laid over on his way back. And I'm like, yeah, you know, if, you, if you're if you going to be here for a while, then let me know. Because I might be off that week because it's the week of Labor Day when he comes back. And I'm like, yeah, dude, and then if you're... You know, if you wanted to stay overnight or a couple days, that would be cool. Because we're not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. Adam Wainwright, Memphis Redbirds. So, Zach Rinkery, Adam Wainwright. <clears throat> but I'm like, dude, why didn't you say something like a month ago, you know? And, uh, that way we could have, like, been like, oh, yeah, maybe we can swing by there and you can come outside and we can say hi and all that. Um, but maybe we'll do that when he gets back that's interesting I knew he was going to China I was like the only reason he'd be in San Francisco the airport is to go out of the country um, yeah he, he he loves China he's all into that Chinese stuff and all that maybe you know find himself a girl or something but he, he's gone there like four or five times he actually was on a plane one time when that that time they had that super huge earthquake that happened in like the middle of China about seven eight years ago maybe ten years but he just happened to be on the plane and it just took off a half an hour before that earthquake hit and it hit like in the area he was staying and then I think on that same trip going um, he was on the flight with Natalie Portman she was there and I was like dude did you go make your make your move or did you go at least talk to her, try to get an autograph, or bust a move? Uh, she looked like she was like, leave me alone. And I was like, I get it, but dude, that's your only chance to ever meet Queen Amidala herself. All right, so that went a little long, folks. But that's because I was telling stories. So there you go. Minor League Monday, uh, 2004 Pacific Coast League top prospects. And uh, Zach Grinke, Adam Wainwright few other people cool stuff people and um, I'll probably do another isotopes one for later in the afternoon because I don't want to just have to wait a week to get through these because I got basketball and football and all that and I'm trying to hold off on those until the seasons come up but I have enough baseball ones that I it would take me a month just to get through those all right thanks people see ya